Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Today we are going to be talking about the recently unveiled mobile tool storage solution from Toughbuilt. We've got Stack Tech here today, so we're going to be reviewing it and getting into it a little bit here on Tinker with Tools. Now, being tool fans, I'm sure by now you've heard of the Tough Built Stack Tech. Milwaukee Packout has certainly dominated the market, but that hasn't stopped a number of companies from attempting to capture some of that market share and vie for your business in the storage game. Now, Tough Built is not a new name in the marketplace. They've been making accessories for quite a few years now. And I think that the big thing that I've taken away from all the different ones I've tied is they are extremely well built, extremely rugged. So when I initially saw the Stack Tech, I wanted to go ahead and at least check it out a little bit. And so today I have what they call their toolbox, which is kind of the most common size that you'll see of this pack out type container. And then I also have their large toolbox, which is more like the medium one that you see in the traditional toolbox stack that they put on sale at the holidays. Now, the first thing that stands out with this is it lives up to its namesake. It's well constructed. Everything is very rigid. It feels very sturdy and it certainly feels like it could take some abuse. Pack out obviously feels pretty good, but some of the older ones, especially when you open up the lids, there's a bit of flex to them. This is actually quite rigid in terms of the flex of the lid. There's kind of a diamond shape to the plastic reinforcements underneath that works throughout the whole lid. Additionally, up here on the front, it is then reinforced with a metal bar. On their system, they actually went with a single center latch instead of the standard kind of two side latches that we got. The latch design seems sturdy and well built. One of the things that I do like about the system is that for the most part, you're left with some really smooth flat edges that aren't going to catch on anything. It really just kind of tucks in nicely with that. That is something that I think is really nice about it. Probably the thing that I feel like is the most premium or easy with this system compared to just about everything else out there is just how easy it is to stack it on top of one of each other. We'll have some footage of that, but you literally just plop it down on top of the other box and it locks itself into place. It has four cleats around the perimeter, two on the front, two on the back that do give it those secure latching points. And then on the box, it has the mating cleat on the other side that when you put it down, it automatically locks into place and connects itself to the box below it. Now, additionally, all of the edges are almost chamfered on this top portion. So if you set it down and it's not directly positioned into it, it's going to push the box down into its natural position that it needs to be to. Now on the corner of each side of this box, you do have these accessory attachment plates they are metal and they serve as kind of an armored guard to the corners to kind of help increase the durability of the box. From what I can tell, they're made of 14 gauge steel and do add some nice impressive build quality to it. And then in the future, they're going to have accessories that are going to attach to these. We'll talk about those more in a little bit. On the interior of the box, you do get two of the closed top boxes or trays and then two of the open top boxes. Now, one of the things that also stands out is just how much interior space there is in these. That's one of the things they've gone with on the Stack Tech is it is a little bit larger compared to the Milwaukee Packout. You are gaining almost three quarters of an inch of depth in this, in this box. Now, when it comes to the large toolbox, for the most part, it is the same setup with a lot of the things I've already talked about. The accessory attachment points are gonna be a little bit larger on each one of the corners. And then inside the large toolbox, you don't get any of those little individual containers. You get a single tray that just kind of sets in there, but that just allows you to kind of have some tools in that and take it out and set it on whatever work surface you're working with. Now, when it comes to how these compare to the boxes that I own, the ones that I actually have multiple pieces for are going to be the Milwaukee Packout. I then also have stuff for the Rigid Pro Gear, both the first gen and the 2.0, Tough, Tough System 2.0, and then I have some Flex Stack Pack. Now, when it comes to stacking ease, I would say first and foremost, the Stack Tech from Tough Built is the clear winner when it comes to stacking. That's because you simply have to just set the box on top of it and it's going to auto lock in place. With the Milwaukee Packout, you kind of got to slide it in and if you get used to it, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but you do have to slide it in. It's not just as simple as setting it down. With the Stack Pack from Flex and the Tough System 2.0, 
you do have to set it down so that it does clip into those clips. With something like the Rigid, it is a completely manual process. You set the box on top and then you have to bring the latches up on the side. Now when it comes to how well it is attached to the other box, that is one place where the pack out really just reigns supreme over everything else. You've got 20 different attachment points where it is actually connected to the box below. In terms of a connection, it's about as good as it gets. And additionally, there are no moving parts other than that center latch, which is a very simple mechanical switch. Now, from what I can tell, the connection on the stack tech is pretty good. Like I mentioned, you do have the four different little attachment points or cleats that it's going to be holding onto. There are a bunch of moving parts and springs and different things that are necessary to go ahead and get those things to lock into place. Do I think it's well built? Yes, but in terms of connection strength, I do think it loses out a little bit in terms of how it compares to pack out. Now, how it compares to the rest of them, I do think the clips are more well protected on the stack tech than they are on something like the Tough System 2.0 or on the Stack Pack, um, just because those have clips that are always kind of out in the open. It seems like there's more potential for something to break on those. Rigid's is a well-built construction, but unfortunately it's something you have to manually do and undo every time. It's not that it's not well connected, it's just not on par with these other ones. Now for weight, I'm going to go ahead and show you the different weights here. I'll have exactly what each one of this size of box for each of these weighs. Now when it comes to price, I think there's a quite a bit of disparity between some of these different solutions. And some of it is because some of them are slightly more professional or heavy built than what some of the other ones are. The most expensive that are out there on the market, and we have included a couple I don't have here tonight just to kind of give you an idea of pricing. Rigid, Flex, and Klein all come in at that, that $80 price point for this size of box. They are the most expensive. Now, obviously, they do run sales on these. For example, Flex is running a buy more, save more right now. Klein's got a sale where it's about $15 off. But those three are certainly the most expensive. Now, next, coming in a little bit lower is going to be Tough System 2.0 and the new Tough Built. Now, in terms of pure value of the ones I have here tonight, Rigid is going to be the cheapest, and it is actually cheaper than Ryobi. Ryobi is actually standard pricing of $50 for this size of box. All right, so now let's talk about some of the pros and cons of my experience of working with this so far. Some of the pros I really think is just how easy it goes together. It comes apart really easy, it auto locks, and so that connection is really nice. I think depending on how you look at it, the interior size being a little bit bigger could also be a pro if you have something that just doesn't quite fit in some of those smaller boxes. Perhaps you can get away with smaller boxes than this because of that near three quarters inch extra height. Now, in terms of some of the cons, I think the biggest thing for me is simply that Tough Build already has an existing ecosystem of different tool bags and things like that. I've got the Tough Built Tool Tote that I've already featured on this channel. Those existing systems currently are not compatible with this. That's something that I wish there was a way to make those existing items already accessible. But I get that when you're redesigning something from the ground up, you may not always have that. I just wish that it could have been. So that is something of a con, depending on how you look at it. Now, in terms of other cons or things that we've run into, this one has been widely covered, and I don't know that's something necessarily I would be doing a whole lot. But if you have multiple of these boxes stacked together and you need something from one of the ones in the middle, a lot of people are able just to go ahead and unlatch the box and lift up the boxes ahead of it, it's still attached to the lid, get what they need and get it out. With the way they've designed this latch and how the boxes above it mate to it, you are actually not able to open a box that has something on top of it. Every other system that I have tried tonight does allow you to do that. So it is something of an anomaly here that they don't have that functionality built in. The only other thing that I've seen that I have not actually been able to test because I don't have any of the half containers is if you put two half containers on top of this, you can't then attach a full container to the top of them. 
I know a lot of people will take their half containers, put them on the top, and then put a crate on top of that. The crate is something that they do offer, but unfortunately the crate is not going to fit on top of the half containers. So in terms of design, I think that could have been designed a little bit better, but overall, now, as I said, initially, they only have eight different SKUs that are going to be available right now. That is not the biggest, most robust system that is out there, but they have already announced what's going to be coming in spring and summer of 2024, as well as other things that are going to be coming in 2024. And the amount of stuff that they have coming out in relatively short time, I think, is where this starts to get a lot more exciting gets to be something where you can really see how much they've thought out this entire system. Whether it's going to be the drawer solutions that they have, the different organizers, the big mouth tool bags and the tool totes, the coolers that they have that go along with this system, work surfaces, a transporter series with the cargo carrier, the four wheel cart, the hand truck, the two in one convertible hand truck that you're gonna be able to do. And I mean, the list just goes on and on. The drawer boxes that are coming out, the different different things they have, they're going to have a first aid kit, um, a water cooler, in addition to those others, a compact vacuum, a box fan, more transporter information, and then a ton of just different little stack tech accessories. There is a lot that they are coming out with for this system and they've laid out their plan for when it's going to get released. Toughbuilt is not a new company. It's not something that I think I'm worried that this is going to be too much for them to bite off. And my initial impressions of this solution is that this is a nice storage solution. It is one of the more rigid, rugged solutions that I have ever seen. It goes together very easily and almost effortlessly in how it connects to the other boxes. Are there some things that perhaps weren't designed the most well thought out? for how people use the boxes, yes. But I think when it starts coming out with all these other different solutions that they have, you can pick and choose the ones that are gonna fit your needs. You're gonna be able to customize it how you want, and it is going to be an exciting release. We're just not quite there yet. When it comes down to it, final conclusions on these boxes. Next to Packout, I think they connect easier than Packout. They come apart easier than Packout. They don't have a secure connection to the other boxes as Packout. At the end of the day, having competition for the Packout system and having viable options for you to go and choose is going to be beneficial to everyone. For Packout users, it's going to continue to push Milwaukee to do more and to innovate more with their Packout solution. For the people that aren't on Packout, having other good viable solutions is going to make the market more competitive and typically a competitive market is one that benefits the consumer. If you have any questions about it, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. If you like what you see in the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Let me know what you think of this. I know there's gonna be tons of people that are gonna sit there and say that Packout is the best and why go with anything but Packout, but I can tell you that having got hands on this, I'm more convinced that this is a better competitor for Packout than just about any of the other systems I've tried. Obviously, I haven't tried them all. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for all your support. And until next time, I'll catch you on Tinker with Tools.